We lift you above all names. We celebrate you, giver of life. Thank you for being so kind. Thank you for your faithfulness all the time. We are grateful. There is somebody who has a left knee predicament, left knee affliction. The Lord is healing it now. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, ancient of days. There is no one like you. Power belongs to you. Dominion is yours, Lord. Thank you for all the works we did today. Thank you for our journeys that were safe. Thank you for our homes that are secure. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We are grateful. Papa, we give you all the glory. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Unto the Lord shall the garden of his people be. We have gathered unto you, Lord. And I pray, King of Kings, that you open our understanding to your word. Impart our destinies. Let our lives not remain the same. Thank you, Daddy. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. I want to welcome you to the presence of God tonight. I know that God is here with us. And I'm sure he's going to bless us. Tonight, I want to continue my discussion on choice making or decision taking. I just concluded on factors that normally affect our decision taking. Now, I'm not teaching for head knowledge. I'm trying to call your attention to things that will help you in the process of choices that you are making. It doesn't matter who you are. Everybody takes decisions. Whether you like it or not, every day you would at least make up to 10 to 20 decisions. You take decisions on many things, whether to go to work, or to sleep, or to climb this the Okada, or to go with your car, or to... You make choices, you make decisions. And I need you to know that every decision you take is crucial. Every one of them. Every decision you take. And since every decision is very crucial, I need you to consciously take decisions now. Because if you take a wrong decision, it may cost you so much. Some people are regretting today over decisions they took in the past. Of course, all of us have taken decisions that we regretted. But even though you have made mistakes in the past, it's best for you to begin to take decisions right, starting from now. I have discovered that if you know how to fight spiritual battles, you know how to cast out devils, and you don't know how to take decisions, you will still be a failure. Whereas, if you don't know how to cast out devils, and you know how to take decisions, you will succeed. Because you can easily ask people to help you to cast out the demon. I mean, what are Pastor Michael, Pastor, what are they doing? You can, you can invite them to come and cast out your demon for you. But you can't invite them to come and help you decide whether you will climb or cut out or you will. 
You are the one who will decide those things by yourself. So, I, I show you some factors that often affect our decision making. And I want to, like I told you in the last message, I want you to begin to wage war against those things. See them as the enemies that are affecting your life. The bitterness of your last, of, of your past years. Huh? Bitterness of the experiences of your past life. Is more crucial than the witch beside your house. Deal with that bitterness. The excesses of your emotions is more crucial huh? than the babalawo by the side of your house. If you deal with your emotions, you deal with your, 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 your circumstances, with issues in your life that affect your decision taking, you'll be a better person. Many of us go through life carrying bitterness against people close to us. Your brother who did something, your sister who did something, your hoku, your spouse, your somebody, your somebody. And you carry this bitterness in your heart. Do you know, when God asks you to forgive, he was not saying it for his sake. He doesn't need your forgiveness. He doesn't need you to forgive. He doesn't do anything to God. He said it so that you can be victorious in life. Because there's no way you carry bitterness in your heart and you will go far in life. Learn from people like Joseph. He gave birth to a child. He called his name Forget. It means, uh, I mean, that is uh, Manasseh. It means forget. He said, God has made me to forget all those things. All forgot his father's house. He forgot everything. All the selling to slavery. All the being accused wrongly. Everything. He forgot, he forgot everything. No wonder he could give back to Ephraim fruitfulness until you forget the past. There's no, no fruitfulness for you. Anyhow, so today, I want to move forward. I'm not looking at factors again. I'm moving to choice making. Go, 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 go. The actual actions of choice making. Now, did you, you, you need to understand that it is not every decision you have to take as a child of God that you need to ask God question about. Hello? Is it every subject you want to take a decision about that you pray about and you say, Lord, lead me. I want to decide. Huh? No, it's not everything. For instance, was it God who helped you choose the clothes you are wearing? Huh? Did you ask him about that? What clothes should I wear today? How many prayed that prayer this morning? Ah. The reason why you don't need to ask God about that is because God gave you sound mind. A sound mind that enables you to take some decisions by yourself. Such that you don't need to ask God questions. So, I want to focus on those kind of decisions first. When you are taking decisions, what are crucial things that are important? And there's something very important I want to talk about today, and I call it avoid shortcuts. Avoid shortcuts. Shortcuts. They call it in Yoruba, onoeburu. Shortcuts. Maybe a better way to call it in Yoruba would have been on Abuja. Huh? But when you want to call it the proper name, it is on Eburu. When you say on Abuja, it sounds positive. But when you say on Eburu, you know it's a negative root. Okay, let me go further. What is a shortcut? Before I go to that, let me read one scripture to you. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. Proverbs 23, verse 7.
He says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. But my emphasis is the earlier part of it. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. That is, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Let me read one more scripture. Go to Psalm 23. Now, Psalm 23 is a very popular scripture. Let me, I will read verse 2 and 3 of it. Psalm 23. Now, David wrote Psalm 23, and David is one man who is reputed to have known the Lord so closely, had good access unto God. He's somebody you don't joke with his words when he describes God. And when he talks about God, because God even made a comment about him and called him a man after his own heart. So, what did David say? He was describing God as his shepherd. And then in verse 2 and 3, he said, He makes me, that is, God makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. The still waters. He leads me beside the still waters, not troublesome waters. Not the kind of places you pass and you regret later. Not the kind of experiences you have had that you will always be afraid of anybody asking you questions about that experience. Hello? He takes me beside the still waters, quiet waters. Verse 3, he restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. God leads his children, but he doesn't lead you anyhow. He has his route that he will normally follow. And the route of God is the path of righteousness. In parts, it's not a road, it's a path. So, which means it's not a big route, it's not where everybody passes. It's a path. A path is a narrow place, it's a small place. It leads me in paths of righteousness. Now, anything that is anti righteousness is not of God because He's a Righteous God is a holy God, and whatever He will do must correspond with His status, with His nature, with His personality, because He's unchangeable. He doesn't change. He won't change for you. He won't. He won't do any corner corner because of you. Mm-mm. He's so straight. God is so straight that we call Him faithful. He is so committed to his way. His principles are unbroken and unbreakable. Now you get what I'm talking about as we go, as we zero on what we are talking about today. Now, what is a shortcut? I try to define it. I say in life, oftentimes, the uh, Effort, time, and challenges it will take to accomplish purpose are too difficult. And the normal man is not interested in going all the way. As a result, we quickly look for an alternative route that will be easier. That alternative, easier route is called a shortcut. The journey is far. The journey is challenging. And you don't want to do that. So you are looking for something that is alternative to that. That is not as troublesome. Not as challenging as that other one. So you create, people create, the devil help you to create a short route, an alternative route. Which is called 
a shortcut. It's easier. Most often, the problem with shortcuts is that they are often unlawful. They are very, very unlawful in most cases. For instance, Amnon, the son of David, we have been using his example. We still spoke about him yesterday. He was not a small boy. He could marry a wife. Tamar, the sister, also was equally matured enough to be a wife. And she was not born by Amnon's mother. So they are just half, it's, it's just his half sister. At that time, it was not unlawful, particularly, for him to marry her. Sarah was like that to Abraham. Are you getting my point? So, Tamar could become the wife of Amnon, and there will be no problem. That's what Tamar was saying to him when he was trying to force her, when he was trying to rape her. That what you need to do is talk to our father and let him allow me to be your wife. I will accept to be your wife. You are a responsible man. You are the next in line to become king. Every woman wants to marry you. I want to marry you, no problem. Tell our daddy. Tell, let's announce it to everybody. Let everybody know I have become your wife. Then you can have sex with me when you want. He was not ready to do that. Because that process was too long. That process was difficult for him. He preferred the short cuts. Short cut. He raped her. And he destroyed himself in the process. Now for you to know what I'm talking about. There was a similar situation earlier in, this, in, the, in the same story, in the same family. There was an in, another incident. When Ruth was sent to go and meet Boaz. You know Boaz was a farmer. Oh, okay. You are confused. The book of Ruth. Chapter 3. You can read it. The mother of uh, mother-in-law. What's her name? Naomi. Center, go and meet this man on the field. Don't talk to him when he's awake. Don't go to meet him when he's at, at uh, he can he's conscious and he's looking at you. Wait until he had slept. Then locate where he had slept and go there. Remove clothes from his leg. And sleep at his feet. Now, this man, Boaz, was a big man. He was a man in authority. And it was in his own farm. He didn't ask this woman to come. But she came. There was nobody watching him to see what he was going to do. And then this girl just came and lie at his feet. And suddenly he woke up and he found a woman beside himself. If it was somebody like Amnon, he would sleep with her. And you know that what that would have costed him? He would have made it impossible for his generation to produce David. He would have made it impossible for his generation to carry Jesus Christ. Because this man, Boaz, gave birth to a child, two roots, that was called Obed. Obed gave birth to his own son, which was called Jesse. And this Jesse gave birth to David, who became king in Israel, and carried the glory and the mercy of God. It all began by one man being straightforward and doing what was right. 
What I'm trying to let you know is that errors in decision making can send your entire lineage into trouble for many years. That's what happened to Ruben now. When immorality was offered to him, we don't even know who invited the other. Whether it was Ruben that invited Bilhah or Bilhah that invited Ruben. All we knew was that they slept together. And because of that, the, fa- the man, the father, Jacob, placed a curse upon Ruben. He said, you are the beginning of my strength, excellency of uh, strength, but you will not excel. I, and he pronounced a curse upon him. To the extent that there is nothing glorious that ever came from Reuben. There's no child from the family of Reuben who became a king in Israel. There is no child from the family of Reuben who became a, 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 a judge in Israel. There is no child from Reuben who became a prophet in Israel. Of course, they can't be priests. It's Levites alone that can be priests. But there is nothing glorious that came from Reuben throughout, up to today. Meanwhile, Reuben itself, the entire family itself, even though he was supposed to be number one, he became the last. In fact, they had to, they had to put Reuben's inheritance inside the inheritance of Judah, his younger brother. And when they begin to number people in Israel, except Benjamin, that was destroyed at a particular time in history. You know, the, the entire history went and destroyed Benjamin. I, I, you're looking at me. Do you read Bible? There was a time that the entire history went and fought with Benjamin to destroy Benjamin. And they literally wiped them out. And they, they had to create a new mercy for them to come up again. So the tribe of Benjamin became the smallest and the least of the tribes in Israel. Except for Benjamin, Reuben is the worst. In terms of giving back to children, they didn't have children. They don't even have children. They, when, they are, when they are numbering the people by tribe, go and check that of Reuben. You see that they are always the least. Why? Their father at a point in his life was careless in decision making. Sorry for that long uh, illustration. So, uh, choice making is a serious subject. Let me get deeper. And I will break it down by giving a few practical examples. Number one, there are shortcuts that are unlawful and sinful. There are shortcuts that are unlawful, that is under the constitution of your country, whether you are in Nigeria or wherever you are. They are unlawful. If you follow those shortcuts and you are arrested, you will go to jail. That's why, that's what we mean by saying it's unlawful. And sinful that is God will send you to hell for them. There are some shortcuts like that. So it is important to avoid them. For instance, cheating in an examination. I mean, in, a, in, a, in an examination. I mean, if I do anyhow. Cheating in an examination is a shortcut. And it is both sinful and unlawful. Any form of cheating, any form of cheating in an exam. Somebody is whispering to you, is cheating, is shortcut. Somebody wrote it and brought it for you, is shortcut. Another person is writing the exam in your name. It's, a, it's, a, it's a unlawful. It's cheating. Uh, the, 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 in your school where you are doing the exam, they are writing the exam on the paper on the board for you. It is 
Chite. Huh? Giraffe. N- stretching your neck. Uh-huh. It's cheating. Writing it on your skin. You know? All, all the li- those ladies now, they write it on their thigh. It is cheating. Asking question in the exam is uh, cheating. So all these things are both unlawful and sinful. If you are caught, it can cost you so much. So it's one type of shortcut. Another type of that, I call it 1B, driving against traffic on a one-way road. You know, you know traffic laws, traffic rules. It's another example of something that is unlawful and in, in, inadvertently sinful. Even though several drivers do it when they feel under pressure for time. Early in the morning, some years ago, there was heavy traffic somewhere. There was something that happened in the bottom here. A pickup van was on the traffic, but the driver became restless. And suddenly he pulled out to the pedestrian side of the road. You know, pedestrian curb. The, the, he just drove into that place because he was in a hurry to go. He didn't know that some kids were crossing the road. It was in the morning. They were going to school. He killed about five of them. And mob action, they, they burnt his car, they killed him himself. He was in a hurry to go. He didn't know he was hurrying to heaven. And he took some along with him. That's a shortcut. He was in a hurry. He wants to cut out of that traffic and go. Why would you do that and drive against traffic? Hmm. C, one C. Getting a job by sleeping with an employing officer is another shortcut that is sinful. But that one, maybe there's no specific law against that. I don't know, maybe. Maybe. You lawyers will be able to tell us whether there's a law about that. But I thought and thought about it. I can't even remember if there's any law that you can use against somebody. But it's a sinful thing. It's a shortcut. It's something you should avoid. I don't know what we will be doing that for if you are a child of God, a believer. You want a job and you are ready to sleep with somebody so that you can have the job. I, will, I expect that a, a genuine believer would rather die than do that. Okay, so those are shortcuts that are unlawful and sinful. Number two, there are some shortcuts that are not sinful, non unlawful. They are not sinful, they are not unlawful, but I still advise you to avoid them. Let me give you my own example about that. So you can say 2A, for instance. I changed school when I was in primary 5, which resulted in my repeating primary 5, because there was no space for me in primary 5 in the new school. No, there what happened? Yes, there was no space for me in primary six, so they put me in five again. Whereas I had gone through five before. So I discussed with my parents, and they approved that I could do a shortcut from there to the secondary school. That if I if I pass, if I sought admission in those days, we don't do common entrance and all those things. You do school by school exam yeah so they said if i do exams admission exam to secondary school and i pass i could go from primary five so i did and i passed very well so just like that i didn't do primary six i went to primary i went to f- uh, from one what did you call it that time it's from one yes 
It was a shortcut for me, you know. Uh, I didn't do primary six. And I caught up with my colleagues that were running ahead of me. I, I, I became their colleague again. What we failed to realize was that there were topics on the school curriculum that was meant to be treated in primary six, which I never entered. I never went to. So I got to secondary school and the lecture the teacher began to he imagined that we all knew what he was saying. I said, What is now? And they are telling him what now was and I was wondering what's wrong with all of them. <laughs> I can say what is now? Now there is nothing called now. Adjective. Ah, uh, adjective. I never heard it before. Pronoun and things like that. They kept on saying it. They, all of them knew the thing. The teacher would say it, and they all knew. I didn't know. So I, I, I became the donut of the class. And instantly, I lost interest in school. I couldn't cope with my colleagues. You know what I did? The library of our school was very rich, full of books, fantastic novels. I went to those places. I tried some of the novels. I loved them. Gulliver's Travel, something, something. Gulliver Twins. Ah, you're an expert there. You know what I used to do? When I resume, I resume in library. I just sit down there. The librarian thought I was the most brilliant student because <laughs> I was the specialist for library. I read all the books in the library but I never attended any class. I don't go to class because you'll be asking no. <laughs> I don't know no. <laughs> I don't know who to ask. I don't know who to talk to about it. Verb, adjective and stuff like that. So, I don't need to tell you what happened. I failed. Of course, I failed. And I had to repeat class one again. I, I was, you know, I, 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 I lost interest in academics. That's what happens to a lot of our children nowadays. That tell you, Okolong uh, Ogbewe, his, uh, his brain doesn't, doesn't fit into school. He's not good in school and things like that. It's not that they are not good in school. You hurry them too early. You pass them through shortcuts, and they, be, they, they you, 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 you made them so foolish, so daft in their class. And they see their colleagues. Their colleagues know what they don't know. So they assume that their brains were so dull. Whereas that's not true. It was you that jumped them to early. Some of you, you go and meet kids who are in primary three, primary four, and you jump them to secondary school. Because you are in a hurry for your child to, 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 to meet up with colleagues. I don't know what, what race they are running that they are meeting up. It's a shortcut. It's not breaking any law. I didn't break any law. My parents didn't break any law by sending me to LA. They didn't, I, 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 you won't go to hell because you went to secondary school too early, will you? It's not a sin. It's lawful. It's sinless. But it is a bad shortcut. So there are some shortcuts like that. Another shortcut that is not unlawful or sinful are footpaths that are easier and shorter. There are oftentimes some footpaths, the real shortcuts by human language. Instead of you to go around like this, there's one shortcut there. Let me pass that route, you know. That is another type of shortcut. It's not unlawful, it's not sinful in most cases, particularly if you are not jumping somebody's fence. <laughs> if you jump somebody's fence and a dog catch you, <laughs> you know that it's unlawful. 
But do you know that those kind of routes can be dangerous? A lady was getting ready for a wedding some years past. A few days before the wedding, she went to see a friend. On an, on an, and on her way back, she decided to follow a lonely shortcut. Instead of the longer road within an estate. Unfortunately, she got raped there. Just like a week or two weeks before her wedding, I can't remember precisely. And that became a big problem for her. Another one, she was my spiritual daughter. We left from fellowship like this. And her house, her, her parents' house was close to our house. And we were going home together. She entered our vehicle, we were going home together. And then we got somewhere. He said, Daddy, Daddy, please stop. I want to stop here. I said, what, what are you talking about? Have we reached your house? She said, no. I want to follow a shortcut here. Instantly, my spirit recoiled. I, and I said, ah, well, shortcut, kill him. Sit down. He said, no, no, Daddy, no, no. You know, and she kept on, no, 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 me. I think you were there that day. So I, and I, one thing I hate is somebody arguing with me. The moment you argue and it's something about your life, yes, sir, is the next answer. And I just said, okay, my bye, and I stopped for her. She came the following day telling me how she was raped that night. Shortcuts. Shortcuts. It may not be lawful. I mean, it may not be unlawful. It may not be sinful. But they are still not the best route for you. Number three, there are shortcuts to wealth, shortcuts to success that most people want to follow. And I will just mention a few of them, like Yahoo Yahoo. That one, you know that one now. I'm sure people outside Nigeria don't know what to see Yahoo Yahoo. <laughs> but in Nigeria we know Yahoo Yahoo. What is how do we describe Yahoo Yahoo now? Internet fraud internet frauds, internet scams, frauds on the internet. Money ritual is another one. And that is strangely becoming interesting in Nigeria now money rituals. I don't know who gave you an impression that by killing another person, you can be wealthy. I don't know. I really haven't seen anybody who have become wealthy by doing that. I haven't seen one. If that was really working, all the babalawos that are doing it for you will be the richest people in the world. Some callous, useless idiots that are helping people to kill others. They are so, they are so wretched. Look at them. They are wretched. Wretched. They are just wicked people. Just wasting people's lives. Any money ritual is another one. Stealing is another one. 419 is another one. I'm sure those are Languages that English does not understand. <laughs> For one night. <laughs> For one night is uh, the section of the Nigerian Constitution that describes fraud, fraudulent dealings. So they, they just use it as the name for that thing. And it is frauds. This one is not necessarily internet fraud. It's fraud. Any form of fraud. Cheating people of their wealth, of their money, is 419. That's another one. Pool and betting are shortcuts to exam racketeering is another one. But you know, some of us do exam racketeering without really realizing that that's what we are doing. Some of you parents, you send money to your children's lecturers so that your child can have favor in the exam. What, 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 what is that one? Is that not exam racketeering? It's the same my, my practice. When I was a student in the university, my parent, anyhow, 
it wasn't even a subject. How would my parents know my lecturer? What would they do? What would they be doing together? Now, some of us we know the lecturers of your children. You know all of them one by one, and you are the one calling them. Hey, Mister Lagbaja, hey, hey, mommy, pass you. Ha! Hey, me. And then you want that child to be successful in life, and you even claim to be a child of God. Or you are the lecturer collecting that favor. Uh, if not for your mommy that she's a nice woman, you are not supposed to pass this exam. Ha! So it is the mommy that wrote the exam. If my child writes my exam and it doesn't pass, I will even I will even try to send them further down. So what I'm saying is that don't rush your children unnecessarily. Election rigging is another example of shortcuts and so on. As a believer, you should not be involved in all those kind of rubbish. Let me go to number four. It is equally strange to find someone who claims to be a believer falsifying documents making false claims for any reason for instance because you want to obtain a visa or because you really want a very lucrative job you falsify documents everyone does it but you are different you are a believer and you can't love the job or the plan to travel more than your relationship with God. That's what a number of many believers don't understand. Somebody called me on phone from one country somewhere in, in, in Europe and requested me to pray with him. Maybe he's even here and he's listening to this message now. He's living there, working there, but he's doing all of that with a stolen identity. You know what they call Uri Uluri? That's what he's using over there. I don't be surprised, so many of your uncles and aunties over there, they are doing that, uh, using Uri Uluri. What is Uri Uluri? Either they steal somebody's document or they rent somebody's document. Some people of actually rent their document for that. They give it to them to use and uh, they claim to be the one on that document and they work with it. They live with it. Now this guy is there. I'm talking about it because he requested me to pray that he should not be caught and that his blessings will multiply. And he told me he's using Ori Olori but it should not be caught. Ask me to pray. Of course, I don't pray that kind of prayer. I told him I won't pray. I would rather request you to return home to Nigeria and start afresh with the Lord. You don't need, God will not lead you in paths that are unrighteous. He leadeth me. I read it to you in Psalm 23, verse 3. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Did you see the way God was boasting about Job to, to the devil? He said, Have you seen my servant Job? A man who has shown evil. A man who is upright before the Lord. God wants to boast about you like that. So God will not open door for you like that. I would rather expect you to go through the straight course. I went to minister in Elifet some years past. And a young, a young man approached me. He's like a son to me in the ministry. He said, excuse me, daddy, I want, I want you to uh, uh, allow me to travel with you to Canada. I said, you travel with me to Canada? I don't understand. He said, I know you go to Canada every year. At that time, I used to go every year. He said, join me on your itinerary so I can travel with you. Of course, that is possible. 
But the first question is, why do you want to go to Canada? You want to carry my bag? You want to follow me? What? what? He said he will, he, and he opened up. He has an ambition to live in Canada. Okay, beautiful. You want to live there? He said yes. And then following me doesn't open the door for you. Because I'm only a guest in Canada. You can't go with me and enjoy yourself. What you need is to migrate to Canada. To request for a document that you need that will help you so that you can work in Canada. And he said that's what he wants, but he knows that that is difficult. I said, ah, ah, ah. It is easy. Very easy. Go and apply. And we will pray. And God will open the door for you. Don't you want to be a student? He said, yes, that's exactly what he wants. He wants to do a course in Canada and settle down thereafter. I said, that's good. Tell them that's what you want. Why do you need to lie to the embassy? You don't need to tell them a lie. Tell them what you want. Apply to go and do it, a, a degree program. It will take a little bit of time, but it will be better for you. If you follow me to Canada, you will be running, you will be running for immigration everywhere. Because I'm sure by the time we get there, you will, you will run away from me. I won't know you where you are again. You know what they do? They follow you like that and they get there and they disappear into thin hair. You don't see them again. And he'll be running for immigration. The woman is you see police will be running and using Rio Lori all over the place. Why am I telling his story? He followed the normal routes. About three years ago now, they gave him a visa. They gave him visa, they gave his wife visa, they gave his uh, how many children? Two children visa. Three. I thought it were three. Now they are in Manitoba and they are settled, doing very well. Thank God he listened to cancer. They gave him visa, they gave him because he went through the normal routes. Don't do kono 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 kono. There was a time we needed to process my visa to go to uh, the US. The first time. There was no money anywhere. He said, Oluwa, we need money to show them so that they can give me visa. He said, who asked you for money? Send in your application. So I carried the document of the 30,000 naira with me and went to the embassy. You remember the rest of the story. They didn't even look at my bank, my statement, my account statement. You don't need to falsify any document. That's what I'm trying to say. Falsifying documents is a shortcut. It's not the way of God. Number five. What about a marriage? At least two women that are trusting God for a child have requested that I should get them pregnant by sleeping with them. At least two that have directly, specifically cornered me and spoken clearly. Not they are not asking to be my wife. They just want me to donate a baby to them because they felt their husbands couldn't get them pregnant. And since I'm a pastor. I could be trusted to never make a noise or claim in the future. So they were ready to pay anything I wanted because they were concluded that their husbands could not get them pregnant. Now, in each case, what interests me was that each one of them said that they were advised by people who have done that before. People who had followed that shameful shortcut. They are the ones who advised them. So, what I'm saying to you is wait for God to come true to you in your challenges. God can meet your needs. He can solve it. 
just relax. It may take a little time, but wait for God. Number six, there are beauty shortcuts. I just want to mention seven. I like seven, the number seven. So number six, there are beauty shortcuts. I remember the president of a country, I mean the wife of a president, died in the process of, what do they call that thing? Lipo, liposuction. Is it not liposuction they call it? Uh, the word. Liposuction. Uh, hey, Tommy talk, yes. Liposuction. They were trying to reduce her stomach. The stomach, the first, she felt the stomach was too big and she was trying to reduce it. In the process, she died. I'm sure it's no longer strange to see ladies with fake breasts, fake bomb, and things like that. Some people have toned so much that they now have multiple skin colors around their body. One section is green, one section is black, another one is uh, light, another one is uh, you don't even know whether it's yellow or <laughs> so I call them kalakini <laughs> just because they are toning their body and that's not limited to the female gender you know in the bid to be accepted instead of going the long haul to develop a correct personality they choose the wrong direction of developing a fake identity. People like that will always end up in regrets because it is difficult to maintain a fake identity. And any acceptability you got through a fake identity will not last. It will not last. And number seven, even in ministry, there are shortcuts. There are shortcuts. A pastor said he was stopped on the road by a stranger. Hey, hey, pastor, pastor. And he stopped. As soon as the stranger entered his car, the man began to greet him familiarly. So he concluded that the guy may be closer than he thought. And the stranger, after he entered the vehicle, began to ask him questions about the church. He said, I was there when your church was inaugurated. So how is the church now? It's five years ago. How many people are you now? The man said, we are about 20. And this stranger laughed derogatorily. Say ah, and be a bet in Anyhow, can we help you to increase? If you allow us to do it in the next six months, we'll be counting thousands of people. When the pastor showed interest, he told him what it will entail. He said, you won't need to do anything directly. We will do everything for you. But every year, we will, you will give us one person. And what is one out of thousands? One person will die every year. And you won't need to use cutlass to cut them. We will give you a ring and you just point it are the right person and the moment you point it that person is gone some years ago I went to see a bishop and he asked, he asked me a question how I used to get money to do crusades say so all these crusades that you are doing across Africa where do you get money for that and I said sacrifice Nisa it's sacrifice you make a lot of sacrifice. And then he said, even those books, that, those big books that you always give to people free, I do get money to publish them. 
I said it's the same sacrifice. And the man said, Oh my God, she alone. Anyhow, I will help you. I want you to join our cooperative. He so said, There's a cooperative we belong to. And their cooperative will be giving me grants to do crusade. It's me money. Grants. You know grants. Money that you don't pay back. They will give me grants to do crusade. They will give me loan to do books. Ah. I said, even that one is good. He said, but the loan will be soft loan. You won't pay interest. Ah. <laughs> I want, he said, you want to join the community? I said, I will join. I will join. Can we go there now? The man said, no. When I discuss with them, I will tell you. I will tell you the dates for the meeting. When I drove back home. I was lost. So excited. I thought, ah, God has finally come true to us. As I was approaching my house, the Holy Spirit said, do you know what you are getting yourself into? I said, it's a cooperative. And the Lord said, it's a secret society. But for people like you, they will not call it secret society. They will call it cooperative. After all, they cooperate there too. So I ran away from the bishop. I stopped picking his call. Thank God for the deliverance. We finished our crusade in Ire recently in Ocean State. This March. On the last day, people were allowed to give testimonies. And there were plenty of people giving all kinds of testimonies of healings that God did for them. At the end, the coordinator, the man coordinating for that day, paraded all the people who gave the testimonies. And he asked the crowd, do you know these people? And they said, yes. And he too began to identify them. That one is somebody's wife. That one is. He said, the reason why he's saying that is because nowadays, past some crusaders will normally bring strange people to give testimonies that they have rented people to come and be saying things. He said, these ones are our, our family members. We know them. That's another shortcut in ministry. Testimonies that are baseless. People now accept to stay on wheelchairs for days, for months, so that they can claim that God healed them and show the image of the crusader. My conclusion is simple. There are shortcuts everywhere, but it pays to avoid shortcuts. It is better to travel for long and arrive safely than to try a shortcut and destroy yourself in the process. There are some things you can do that in the future, many years after, you would be walking and be looking at your back. Do you understand what I'm talking about? If somebody shows up and said he was in so so and so place where you did youth service instantly you will keep quiet you don't want to talk again so that they will mistakenly recognize you because there are things you did that you are ashamed of some shortcuts that you followed that you shouldn't have followed God himself wants to be proud of you that's why he leads you in paths of righteousness. In finally, God will not lead you in any way that is not righteous. It is not the style of God. God does not lead us on shortcuts. If you see any spirit, that is, if any spirit manifests in your life 
and is leading you through shortcuts, please run away from him. It is not the style of God. Shortcuts are not the way of God. You are going to pray. There's somebody God is healing you in your private parts. Just put your hand there. The Lord is breaking that yoke. You have been battling with that affliction there for long. And the Lord is healing it now. I break the power of that affliction. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. We are going to ask God for grace to avoid shortcuts. Grace to avoid shortcuts. Can you ask for that? Give me a commitment and grace to avoid shortcuts. Because from today, I will no longer patronize shortcuts. I will no longer patronize shortcuts. It is not the way of my God. Starting from today, I will no longer patronize shortcuts. It is better for me to arrive late than to follow shortcuts. It is better for me to go through challenges and difficulties than to follow shortcuts. Give me grace to avoid shortcuts. I know when the offer comes to you, most of us will not be there. But there's a commitment you can make today. Give me that grace for it. I don't want to follow a shortcut in my life. I want to follow you completely. Your way is not the way of shortcuts. You lead in paths of righteousness for your sake. For the glory of your name. So from today, I will no longer follow a shortcut. In business, in ministry, in marriage, in every aspect of my life. No space for shortcut again. There's somebody God is healing your back. Put your hand there. I break the power of that back pain in the name of Jesus. I command healing in your body now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. And the affliction will not rise up a second time. Thank you, ancient of days. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. I know it so, I find it so. His yoke is easy, his burden is light. Oh, 